Hey, everybody. It's me, Hugh. It's with Liquid Lunch. It's uh, Thursday. I got Sandra here, as usual, on a Thursday. Yes. Right, Sandra? Yes, 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 yes. You're looking pretty summery today. You know what? Oh, it's the first day I feel really summery. Really? Yeah. It feels so beautiful today. It feels like summer's here. Yeah, finally. Thank God. Right? Yeah. You Two know, months I'm, of good weather. I'm... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Two months of good weather. <laughs> What um, camera am I supposed to look at? No, don't worry about cameras. I know. Well, don't I worry. To tell everybody. <laughs> right? But still. No, just don't worry. Okay, let's have the stairs pretty Okay. There are no cameras, actually. There are no cameras at all. We don't use cameras anymore. No, because right? we've got 5D. Yeah, we're 5D. Okay. Speaking of 5D, we have <laughs> Michelle Bilo joining us. All she does is laugh. Hello, everyone. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. And um, it's, uh, it's just, I know there's a big, uh, you, you're an art curator of the raw, natural-born artist. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, my official title is Canadian Director of Events. So um, I take care of the Canadian leg of raw, natural-born artists. They're based out of Los Angeles. And basically what we do is we give emerging artists a platform to show their work and promote them yeah uh, so that's what we're doing in canada they're all over the united states as well uh so yeah it's really exciting i get to work with amazing artists all the time and uh throw events for them and help them in their next step forward in their career I noticed uh, that they were also in Australia and some other places. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So we're in 60 plus cities throughout the world, uh, mostly in the United States, Canada and Australia. We do have London, UK and Tokyo, Japan as well. And looking to spread throughout, you know, Europe and Asia uh, as well. So how did you get involved if it's out of <laughs> California? It's a long story. Um, I used to own and operate an art gallery in Toronto called Moniker Gallery. I had that for a couple of years and unfortunately the business got, or sorry, the building got sold. Yeah. So I kind of got the boot out of that location and took a year off, was trying to find something that within the arts that I could work at, was getting really frustrated. Uh, couldn't find anything that was applicable and ended up responding to an Indeed job post uh, mm -hmm. that they had posted on Indeed for a showcase director in Toronto and responded to that, went through three really long interviews and then eventually got the job. So it was fate, essentially. <laughs> it was fate. It was just random that I had seen that job post on Indeed. So. And how long have you had that job? I, w I got hired and went down for training in February of last year and did my first showcase in Toronto in May of last year. So. Yeah. So now, what kinds of artists are we talking about? We're not talking music, right? We're talking... We're talking everything. So we oh. deal with emerging artists, not just in visual art and photography, but music, performance art, uh, also accessory designers, uh, filmmakers, and hair and makeup oh. artists as well. Yeah, our, our showcases that we do are multimedia, so they encapsulate all of those genres of art in one show under one roof for one night. Well, I noticed that this show coming up is yep. at the Mod Club, right? Yeah. Which is usually known for music, right? Yep. Yep. So what is exactly going to be happening? Because I know there's going to be visual artists there too, right? Yeah, we have... We have a lot, a lot planned. Uh, the Toronto show has grown so much that we're doing a two-day event. So it will be on July 7th and July 8th at the Mod Club. Uh, it will be different artists showcased on each night. There will be live musicians ranging everywhere from uh, hip-hop to live electronic to uh, acoustic. There will be performance artists. We have a burlesque dancer who will be dancing on Friday night. A lot of visual artists and photographers. We don't limit it to one genre. So you have everything from, you know, figurative art to surrealism all over the place. Uh, we have hair and makeup artists that do special effects that will you can see them working on their models uh, throughout the night. Um, and we also have accessory designers. So. Yeah, we're really excited about the show. The Mod Club, we absolutely love. It's a great venue. They're very supportive of the art scene in Toronto, and uh, we love doing our shows there and are excited to do the two-day event for the first time. So um, so what's like? how does it work? Are there going to be booths around? Because I'm visualizing the Mod Club, and I'm just trying to... 
Yeah, so there's going to be, each artist is allotted a certain amount of space. Uh, we bring in metal fencing panels, for instance, for a photographer or a visual artist to hang their work on. Uh, they get a certain amount of space. So everyone is selling something at the event. Uh, visual artists are selling their work. Accessory designers are selling their work uh, as well as showcasing it. Mm -hmm. So they will have, you know, mini booth setups all over the mod club, right on the main floor, on the top floor. It will be a maze of creativity that you can kind of go around as well as you can focus your attention on the stage to when those performances come on. Mm. So do you have to, as the director of events, do you have yeah. to speak to everybody and do you have to go to auditions? Like, are you responsible for every single performance that takes place yeah, so I curate uh, I curate the shows. So I find all of the artists and the talent that I want involved in the shows. Uh, we do have a website where people can submit. So we do have people submitting constantly to our website. But uh, yeah, as the director, you curate the show. So you figure out who you want in the show, why you want them in the show, uh, reach out to them. We have communication with our artists on a weekly basis. So it's uh, it's. Pretty in, it's pretty well, now, intensive. Now I see what you mean when you say it's 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 all it's more than you can handle. Yeah. Like sometimes now I wow. So you must almost personally know each and every artist. Yeah, we we make a point to um, get to know our artists. We uh, we do something called the walkthrough meeting, which we do about four weeks before the event, where they all come to the. The, the venue, in this case the Mod Club, and we go through all the production details and then we take them out for some food after to actually get to know them. Uh, so our organization, we want to get to know the artists on a personal level and, you know, understand what makes them click and what makes them happy and, and help them. You know, that's really what we're doing at RAW is trying to help emerging talent because there's so much talent going on. There's artists that are, you know, mm. literally drawing in their p parents' basement that are just outstanding and we want to give them that platform where they can get that notoriety and they can actually you know know that what they're doing is amazing so so are you looking for the next Leonardo da Vinci or <laughs> who well, knows probably, you never who know knows? you right? don't know we've had raw artists that have gone on to be signed to you music labels gone on to walk in major fashion runways that have gotten into galleries so we're wow. you know we're that first platform where they can kind of you know do their first show or maybe it's not their first show but they can have that notoriety and recognition wow, it's beautiful it's great thank you how, thank how you. good that must feel it's such an amazing job just you know getting those emails afterwards from artists that are you know, you've changed my life, or this is how positive it was for me. It's it, it is very, very rewarding. So, yeah. You know, it's I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, just the model that you guys use, and whether you want to call it the business model or whatever, because yep. it does seem to be maybe, or maybe maybe not, but it seems to be a little bit unique in the way that you have structured the whole process of putting these shows together. Yeah, we definitely have a fairly tight organizational system in place. I mean, doing these showcases in 60 plus cities, we've learned and grown from all of that. Um, our artists, when we get them involved, we there's a lot of things that we give to them uh, that stem just beyond doing the one show with us. We don't kind of do the one show and say, you know, good luck with the rest of your career. Uh, we, we offer them to do a show in another city outside of Toronto within one year so they can travel and expand their artistic network that way. We provide them event photography so they can build their portfolio. Uh, we take headshots of them that they can also add to their portfolio, their, their um, profile stays up on our website indefinitely so they're getting additional promotion that way mm -hmm. uh so yeah we do we definitely have a unique way of doing things that is stems beyond like i said just doing that one show we want to be there for our artists outside of just doing that one show and like continually push them to grow and move forward like do they do the artists sign up and then because i know when i signed up just to buy yeah. a ticket right yeah which is another thing right normally yeah. you go to an art gallery or something like that you're not buying a ticket. That is right? a good point, yeah. You know, so, I mean, uh, but I mean, it, usually I never buy tickets, so, <laughs> um, so somehow you're doing something right to get people like me to buy tickets. Yeah, so, so what we yeah. expect from our artists, our artists that are involved, we don't do 
uh, you know, a, a fee to join our organization or a hanging fee or a booth fee, which is common in most shows that you do uh, when you're emerging in Toronto. Uh, instead, we have our artists that they're responsible for selling 20 tickets to the event. Mm -hmm. So we do this for multiple reasons. One, to pay for the production. Uh, for two, it really helps the artists uh, learn about promoting themselves and learn about getting themselves out there. Uh, it really pushes them forward to do that. So that is probably why you, you bought a ticket to the event, absolutely. That is that was involved yeah <laughs> but it is great too because then you kind of you uh, spread the work of selling those tickets right yep and you know and and so everyone brings in 20 people while everybody now you're cross promoting with all the other artists right absolutely so because each artist has their own set of supporters and you know art centric people that they're going to bring to that showcase yeah. because they're multimedia showcases you know the person that might go out to a rock a live rock show may not find themselves in an art gallery it might not just be their thing but they're going to be exposed to that work that you would normally see in an art gallery so we're exposing the not only the artists to different artistic disciplines but also the audience to different artistic disciplines that they might not be inclined to go out to go see yeah because it's more than an art show it is more you know, than like you go to an art show. gallery you might see some paintings or whatever but here you're going to get music you're going to get yep. a, a variety of different art forms lots of different artists right it's yep. uh now it's uh, july 7 and 8 is the 7th the friday the seventh is Thursday, and then the eighth is Friday. So, so okay, so like, what time and, and does it go all day long or? No, so we're an evening event. We open the doors to the public at eight p.m. on both nights. Uh, usually, people come right at eight p.m. The performances on the stage, which would be music, uh, performance art, and fashion, we start those around nine. We end at midnight. Our DJ keeps spinning, and we have the venue booked until two a.m. So we keep up and running until. You know, it's obvious that the night's ending. So, so it's almost like a night out. It is a with total lots of night great out. Art, right? It is, yeah. And the bar is open too. It's yeah. at the mod club, so people can have a few drinks. Uh, you know, to really take in our shows, it's going to take you at least two or three hours to walk through everything yeah. and, and see the performances. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. That's great. Now you got sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, they're really fun shows. You got to come out. <laughs> it sounds like a, it sounds like a multimedia experience. It's not really a show. It sounds it's not. It sounds like you're part of the show actually. Yeah, our yeah. events are extremely interactive we encourage even our visual artists if they want to do live painting throughout the event or uh, you know our makeup artists will have their models walking around the venue handing out their business cards promoting themselves so we really encourage our artists to be interactive we don't want it to be you know the typical show where you know the arts hanging on the wall you know anything that they can do to make it more interactive for people that are coming we really really encourage that so the artists have full reign over what they're able so to do this is not an art gallery where you go sit and you look at the picture and you think hmm. you can do that <laughs> but there's a lot more to do than that for sure <laughs> yeah it's social art social multimedia you know it's like yeah. it's like what facebook is to you know um, it's just so so interactive yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay, so now I'm just curious, like, for, for art, uh, artists that are watching this that may never have heard about Raw before, like, when like when is the next show? Not counting the Barry show, but say the next Toronto show. How long between shows? Uh, normally we do uh, our shows three months apart. Uh, for this, we're doing a quick turnaround to an August show. We're doing a single day show on August 26th, and then we're moving to December, which will be December 15th and 16th. Uh, we never have a cutoff to submit your work though so we're always you know a huge part of my job is looking under every nook and cranny in Toronto trying to find talent which isn't that hard because there's talent everywhere in this city but uh, our website we are always accepting submissions so uh, any interested artist can go to rawartist.org they can uh, submit their work and it will come right to me as the director and then we'll, we will reach out to the artists that we want involved in the show and I'm just curious like uh, what percentage of the submissions do you contact and say we'd like to have you in our next show? Just <laughs> that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. So okay, so you, yeah, yeah, we have a certain level of quality with um, with the shows that we want to hit. Uh, we're not 
you know, genre specific, as I mentioned before, but there is a level of quality, even with emerging talent that we want our artists to be at. Uh, the director of each city has that, you know, it's really their call on who they include as the curator of the show. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now you got one coming up in Barrie as well. Do you want to tell us about that one? Yeah, we're super excited about Barrie. I actually grew up in Aurelia is where I originally grew up, moved to Barrie, and then eventually moved to Toronto. So it's kind of getting back to my roots. I am directing that show. Uh, we're doing it at the Roxy Theatre on July 22nd. It's a beautiful, beautiful venue. And... Uh, just as I've been digging and, you know, looking in those nooks and crannies, like I was saying, for talent, it's amazing what is going on in Barrie and surrounding area. Aurelia, there is such a strong art community up there. Um, and, you know, we're getting the right people involved for the show and really, really excited to have that representation in northern Ontario. But this is a one full day event or is it a one evening it's event? It's the same thing. So all okay. of our events worldwide work uh, around some, you know, some cities may start at 7 p.m. Uh, for the events I direct, I always start at 8. So it's okay. always an evening event, uh, one day event. Uh, with Toronto, it's a two day event. But in general, it will be a one day event. So yeah. Now, do you ever have repeat artists? An artist doing more than one show? We do, yeah. Okay. So okay. we have uh, last year... Um, we had a band that did three shows. We allow repeat artists okay. if it's something that's they feel is really beneficial for them. We absolutely will allow them back. We wouldn't take, you know, 30 repeat artists for one show because we want to keep it fresh. But right. we absolutely have artists that come and do multiple shows. Yeah. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Barry on the 22nd, is that right downtown? Like, yeah, it's on Dunlop Street. Yeah. It's by the water. It's right by the bus station. Uh, it's, like I said, it's an amazing, amazing venue. It's got five different levels. It's just, it's going to be awesome. Great stage, great tech. Well, that's great because we have the bus station right next door to where we are here. Boom, it's like... So people can get on that <laughs> bus, bus get off bus the bus station. in Barrie, and walk across the street <laughs> to the Roxy. Yep, that's pretty much it. Show. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, what about other cities? Because I know I saw like Halifax, Edmonton, I think, uh, yep. Montreal. Do you want to just tell us about what's happening in the other cities? Yeah, so right now, um, kind of my job this year is to expand Canada. Um, right now in Canada, we're operating in Vancouver, Edmonton, Halifax, mm -hmm. Barrie, Toronto. Um, Montreal? Montreal, yeah, thank you. Uh, we're bringing on five new cities. Uh, I'm doing training with the new directors in August, and we're going to launch uh, those five new cities in November, which will be Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, Quebec City, Victoria, B.C., Calgary, and Regina. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um. That's pretty powerful. So powerful. <laughs> it slammed our door. Um, so what are you looking for? Besides, obviously, artists in any of those cities, but are you looking for anything else? In a director or just yeah. in well, general? Well, I mean, just in general. What People We're who are watching this... We are, are looking, looking for? for to give a platform for all of these artists that don't, you know, maybe they can't get into your typical art gallery setting or they can't get a, a music show. We're looking to give these artists that, like, that big moment where yeah. they can feel like all their hard work that they do as an artist is, is worth it. So I suppose, too, um, if I were an artist that was possibly thinking of being featured at Raw Toronto, is it? Yeah. It's called Raw Raw. Our company name is Raw Natural Born Artists, okay. uh, but when I talk about Toronto, I just pare it down and say okay. Raw Toronto. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess that one of the best things to do, though, is to actually go to the event. Yes. And then you get a feel for it. And you then you can do. see if, whether or not, you know, that's something that it might work for your work. I agree, because our shows are not for everyone. There's artists that are maybe they're too far ahead in their career or they don't you know it doesn't work for everyone but for some artists the way that we set up our shows really clicks so the best thing to do if an artist is interested in you know possibly coming on for a show is absolutely come out to a show yeah uh, i can try and explain our shows you know so you you can talk to them. You're there to talk to them that day too, or you're so busy doing. The oh, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there from okay. the beginning of the production till the end. I arrive at the venue at 10 a.m. Get it all set up. Uh, I'm there throughout the event, interacting with all the nice. artists. Yeah, it's really fun. The thing I like about this concept is it's not a competition. 
It is not. Actually, there's a camaraderie that happens yeah. with all the artists. It's a very, very, it's very supportive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, American Idol or something like that, where it's when usually when you have artists and you have a big event like this, it's about a competition and you Fair have a enough. panel of judges. Yeah. This is, this is not about that. I really, I think that's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah. It's a celebration really. Yeah. It's, it's a celebration of art on every level. Uh, celebration of the city that we're doing it in. Uh, and yeah. at the end of the day, you really can't judge that kind of thing anyway, even as a singer, no matter what, because art is subjective. I agree. You know, one person's yep. jewels, another person's junk, you know, so what person thinks is a really, you know, great artist, another person may think, well, you know, they're okay, but I really like this one, because I like these colors, you yep. know, that kind of thing, right? I agree, yeah, people have different reasons for liking yeah. different pieces, yeah. I mean, yeah. it can be as mundane as, that's going to go with my sofa, or, <laughs> it, you know, it can be as complex as, that reminds me of a dream that I had, or, or I don't like that one, because that reminds me of my ex. Right? You never know. <laughs> I remember when I was in acting and I used to audition, I didn't get this part because I looked, I reminded the producer of his ex. It's like, done. He probably you couldn't know. handle you, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, That's our little secret. Okay. <laughs> So people can check it out in Toronto because that's a great idea to come and check it yeah, out. Yeah, come July check it out. July 7 and 8. Do they need yeah. to buy a ticket uh, first? Yeah, you know what? We do sell tickets at the door. They're yeah. $5 more expensive yeah. at the door than online. But if you buy tickets online, you can actually support an artist directly. Right. So when oh. you go to the checkout, you'll have nice little thumbnails of all our artists involved. And you can click which artists you want to support. Even if you don't know an artist personally, click one, support them. Uh, it will mean a lot to them. And you'll get your ticket cheaper. And you're going to directly support an emerging artist. No, I, I didn't click. So I hope she sent me the link that was the one that was referenced to her already. She she probably would have. We'll yeah. check in with her, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's great. So, um, and people, of course, across the country can check out the website, right? Yeah, and absolutely. Submit their art, submit their work. All to over you, the all place. Sort of Anyone thing. watching that is from you know wherever, uh, we have a, a list of cities yeah. that is listed on the front page of our website. You can submit your work. Uh, all all kinds of cities, sixty well, plus cities. So that's wow, great. That's so there's amazing. the website is uh, rawartist.org, right? Yep, that's correct. And uh, and maybe we should talk about we have a venue here. Maybe we can do an event here. I'm just putting that out there. I love this space. It's so beautiful. I I mean I've taken a whole bunch of pictures. It's very impressive. It's really really neat. I love what you guys are doing. Awesome. Great, thanks. Yeah. Great to meet you. Thanks for coming yeah, in today. And thank you. Looking forward yeah, to the event at the Mod Club on July 7th and 8th. I think it's going to be an amazing event. And yeah, Barry on July 22nd. <laughs> so, awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Right. <laughs> so, we're going to take a little break, and we got much more coming up here on Liquid Lunch. Yeah.